Thank you for coming to our lightning talk as part of OpenCon Cleveland. Our talk is titled Fostering Collaboration in the Cleveland Teaching Collaborative. My name is Molly Buckley Marudis. I am on the faculty at Cleveland State University and happy to be joined by my fellow uh, presenters and leadership team. Hi, I'm Shelley Rose. I'm Associate Professor of History at Cleveland State University and one of the co-founders of the collaborative with Molly. And I'd also like to introduce our third leadership team member, Chris Brennison, who's the Senior Manager of the Center for Instructional Technology and Distance Learning at Cleveland State University. So what is the Cleveland Teaching Collaborative? First, the Collaborative is an award-winning working group for research, reflection, and support for pandemic pedagogy and beyond, founded in 2020. The first component of this Collaborative is that we have an academic blog with dozens of teaching case studies, which can be found through that link right there. Another component of the Collaborative is a resource referatory of over a thousand entries, um, which can be found at the link below with referatory.cleteaching.org. We are also a professional development arena for instructors at all levels. The first two examples support that professional development, but we also provide monthly video discussion groups and something we call an assignment design cafe. And one of the unique things about our Collaborative collaborative, excuse me, is that it's a partnership between higher education instructors and pre-kindergarten through 12 educators in Northeast Ohio. And if you're interested in our history, you can follow the link at the bottom of the slide. Thanks. So in preparing for our lightning talk today, um, one of the things we really hope to share with you are some of the places of possibility as well as some of the lessons learned through our work uh, leading this collaborative the last two years. So the first place we zoomed in, um, we focused on what we're learning from our case studies. Uh, we're really excited that we have 41 case studies published to our academic blog on cleteaching.org. Um, and there are several lessons learned, one of which involves um, really developing an incredibly as clear as possible um, a process for publication, working with our authors to make sure that the process is streamlined and that we move from abstract to draft to publication as smoothly as possible. And a second part of our collaborative, which you mentioned before, is the referatory, which is basically a database of educational resources, which grew organically out of our original uh, 12, 20 case studies in 2020, um, where we were pulling educational resources that our authors were using and sharing them out during the pandemic for other educators. And some of the lessons learned there were big lessons. Um, we learned that um, platforms for databases aren't always created with um, the human experience in mind. They're meant for cash cataloging. And so we had to really rethink our controlled vocabularies and the language we were using to talk to educators and how educators were talking with each other and searching for these resources. Um, we also realized now, especially after this morning, I checked, we have over 1400 entries um, that we needed more focused curation that educators can browse 1400 entries, but it's not the most efficient process. And so we've created another, a couple other levels of curation, including um, collections and showcases. And one of the things that we realized, especially this year, is that our platform was developed in an emergency, essentially, during the COVID-19 pandemic. And now it is really set to respond to other urgent matters and urgent topics that educators need, um, one of which this past spring was the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And we were able to create a collection that now has over 80 resources for educators. And so it's it's constantly an evolving process. And so we're learning lessons as we go and in all aspects. <laughs> Thanks, Shelley. Looking at our assignment design cafe, which falls under that professional development and learning arena we mentioned on the previous slide. Um, we are really proud that this particular element of the project is something that has become a partnership with several different centers and groups across campus, including the library, our university center for faculty excellence, um, the Center for Instructional Design and Technology, e-learning. Um, and so it has brought together a really important group of people who often worked in silos. And once a month, we come together um, and open a space for, 
faculty to drop in and ask questions, share things that are going well, or gain some feedback on something, um, maybe like a syllabus or an assignment that they're working on. Um, one of the lessons learned, we, we were really working to increase attendance to try to reach as diverse a group of staff, faculty as possible. Um, and we started to play with really open-ended, uh, no agenda kinds of forums versus what we now call our Tinker Talks, which are a little bit more focused. And we reach out to different folks on campus who might have an expertise in one small area and give their own lightning talk on that particular idea or practice and then open up the floor. Um, and we found that this may help with recruitment um, because if someone sees something they're interested in learning a little, little bit more about, they may pop in and has a very low uh, commitment in terms of time. Um, so this is something we hope to continue and conti work to build out over the next year. Thanks, Molly. Yeah, and so another aspect of our professional development offerings is our summer sandbox. Um, last year we had a summer sandbox and a smorgasbord <laughs> of um, activities. We ended up with 18 recorded workshops that we posted to a YouTube channel for the Cleveland Teaching Collaborative, some of our first static, you know, collaborative host content, which was kind of exciting. And some of the lessons learned there is that um, last summer we took on quite a bit. We were very excited to help support our colleagues. And now we have a really steady and good foundation with those recordings. Um, this summer we'll probably build on that with fewer workshops, but perhaps more um, kind of focused on a week when we can make sure our colleagues are available. Um, July was not the month last summer. <laughs> So maybe this summer we'll rethink timing, but we're also thinking a lot about modality now that more options are open if we'll do in person sessions that are then recorded and posted so that we can have synchronous and asynchronous participation. Um, we're going to think more about that this summer as we move into that. Um, we haven't done the active thinking yet because this year has been, as everyone knows, a bit of an adventure as well, um, but we're looking forward to thinking that through. Thanks, Shelley. And the last area we wanted to highlight um, during this talk is related to the dissemination um, of what we're learning across the board with this work. And given that it was <laughs> launched in the midst of an emergency and continues to respond to, as Shelley mentioned, several um, you know, intense and challenging moments that we're facing right now, we really try to force ourselves to stop and reflect in writing on some of the things that we're learning and be able to share that work. So all three of the published articles that we have written related to this work are themselves a reflection um, and they share many of the lessons that we're learning along the way related to the, to the three different components and um, elements of this project. And we think it's really important for opening up scholarly discussion on the challenges and the points of possibility um, for what this work might mean um, for creating a real hub for innovation for educators from that pre-K through university uh, continuum. So if you're interested, you can uh, click, they are all available. Um, I think they're all open access online so you can find them uh, by going to our website or uh, you know, clicking on, I think our slide is hyperlinked, so. Thank you. Yeah, we'll we'll hopefully share our slides if the links don't <laughs> don't work in the live presentation. Um, but this is just thank you for um, listening to our lightning talk. Um, this is just a final slide acknowledging our leadership team. You've already met Molly, Chris, and I. Um, but we'd also like to acknowledge that we've had great support from graduate research assistants over the past two years, and they're all listed here. Um, and we couldn't do it without our team. So thank you for your time, and we look forward to some great discussions during OpenCon. Thank you.